to get live to the trading desk. Victor Adair joins me on the line right now. Victor, I want to just uh, start with, uh, we were talking about the market earlier, and, and my goodness, it's almost been eerie how little volatility there's been. Yeah, volatility has been really low as the markets run up. I mean, and it, it's not just the American market. The stock markets around the world have had a, a great run. Uh, the benchmark S&P 500 is up about 14% from where it was just before the American election. Hit all-time highs again this week. Uh, and I heard you make this reference earlier about a 1% correction. I think we've gone 90 consecutive days without so much as a 1% correction. I have to tell you, you know, this reminds me of the, the dot-com boom back in 1999 when the market just went higher and higher and higher every day. And, you know, you, you, you just looked like an idiot if you weren't in there. And you, in some respect, you looked like an idiot if you were. <laughs> well, let me just come to one aspect of that because I, I sort of got this on my calendar. As, as we've got President Trump, you know, State of the Union address coming up on Tuesday. Uh, that could, yeah. I mean, again, there's so many expectations, as I was alluding to this earlier, around what's going to be in that tax proposal. At least we're, we're certainly factoring in, uh, you know, tremendous changes to the good for business. Yeah, you know, I, I saw something in a story earlier this morning where um, Trump is seen as a pro-business guy, whereas Obama was anti-business. I think, really? You know, during Obama's tenure, his, his eight years in office as president, the stock market tripled in value in the United States. And, and it, certainly things are different here under Trump. And you're right. Tuesday, you know, dinner time, we're going to have Trump do the State of the Union address. This would be an opportunity, and believe me, the markets will be watching, to see how well he does. If he sets out some real specific time of timelines on the things he wants to get done. I think also the, the market will be looking to see whether or not he can get along with Congress to do some of the things he wants. Us. Anyway, the markets are going to be watching and judging his performance on Tuesday night. And given this extended bull run that we've had to the upside, that, that could, could uh, be a trigger for a bit of a correction. And speaking of a correction, by the way, the Toronto stock market hit all-time highs this week, and it's been marching higher like a lot of markets around the world, and then fell hard this week. We're down over 300 points on the Toronto Composite, and we've created on the charts a weekly key reversal down. So that kind of action, I mean, the markets are primed for a bit of a correction. I am not short. I'm not long this market. I'm not short either. I'm just looking at it, as Drew and I like to say, we're just watching the show but, but it's, a, it's a heck of a show, and it's a different world, certainly, with Donald Trump in the office. And, and one more thing, just very quickly here. we got Dutch elections coming up in a couple of weeks. You know, the Germans and French are all voting. You know, things seem uh, very fluid right now. I mean, that French election, you should get a, a bag of popcorn and just watch who's getting arrested next, or at least accused. It's unbelievable what's going on there. But that also certainly adds to the level of uncertainty. Uh, the, certainly lots of geopolitical election risk in Europe, you know, and it plays out in, in the markets that we love to trade, which is the currency markets. We had the U.S. dollar hit a 14-year, the U.S. dollar index, I should say, hit a 14-year high in December. We, we backed off about 2% since then. I think the currency markets are unsure whether or not Donald Trump and his team want a lower U.S. dollar and, and what that means in the world it might be a case of certainly be careful what you ask for. And uh, also, by the way, to, to, to go to that, that uncertainty in Europe, we have uh, yields on German bonds are at all-time highs. I see this as capital from around Europe is saying, you know, I think I'll get out of Italy. I think I'll get out of Spain. I'll go yeah. over and park myself safely in Germany. The cross rate between the euro and the Swiss franc is really stressing as well as capital is trying to flee the uncertainty of Europe and, and go into Switzerland. And certainly, I think that's a component in the rise that we're seeing. We're up of $125 or so an ounce in gold since the December lows. Gold up as the dollar's down, as real interest rates are down, as uncertainty around the world rises. So, yeah, there's a lot going on, Mike, and i got to say, I haven't got it figured out. I've probably got the smallest positions on I've had in a long time in the market. And my, my rule here would be, you know, stay out if you, if, you, if, you, if you just have doubt about what's going on.
Well, we'll be here to chronicle it and uh, watch very closely. Vic, thanks for taking the time. You betcha, Mike.